Welcome to the fourth ASEAN EU Cooperation and Scholarship Day. You are now in the reception area. Here is the list of events we have prepared for you. Click on the schedule button to get a reminder on your phone or devices. Just dropping in to see what's on? Find this little red button to see which event is currently live and just join the fun. Take the time to explore the expo area and see what have been prepared for you. Here on the booth panel, you can have a one-on-one -on -one Q and A session with our exhibitors. Download all the information that interests you, join workshops and sessions, or try out the games. Each session also has its own booth panel for you to interact with the speakers. To have a conversation with an expo representative, click share video and audio. The booth moderator will allow you to have a conversation with them. Have something to say? Head on over to the Voice of Youth booth. Pick your virtual background and overlay and say it with a photo or video. Don't forget to follow and tag at EU in ASEAN when you post it on social media. You might be the lucky winner to get a special hamper from the EU. We're so excited to have you here. And Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth ASEAN EU Corporation and Scholarship Day 2021. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome here to the ASEAN, the fourth ASEAN EU Corporation and Scholarship Day 2021. I would also like to welcome ASEAN Secretary General, His Excellency Dato Lim Chok Hoi, His Excellency Igor Drismans, EU Ambassador to ASEAN, and also Ambassador Noel Servigon permanent representative of the Philippines to ASEAN. Welcome and thank you for being here with us. Now, this year is special, not only because this is the fourth time this event is held by the ASEAN and the EU, but also because this year we are celebrating ASEAN's EU 44th, that is double four, year of partnership. And do you know that last year ASEAN and the EU have also just elevated their relationship to becoming strategic partners? Now, you all know how it feels when our relationship has just moved up to the next stage, right? It's exciting and it comes with brand new commitments. One of the main pillars of ASEAN-EU relation is connectivity, which is what this event is all about. Promoting student mobility both within ASEAN and between ASEAN and Europe. So for the next two days, you will have the opportunity to converse with EU experts, hear the stories of ASEAN young leaders, and also find scholarship opportunities. So make sure you look through the event schedule and visit all of our exhibitors booth. Before we go any further, I would like to invite our host, ASEAN Secretary General, His Excellency Dato Lim Chok Hoi, and EU Ambassador to ASEAN, His Excellency Igor Drismans, to share some opening remarks. Please allow me to call on His Excellency Dato Lim Chok Hoi. The floor is yours. His Excellency Ambassador Igor Drismans, Ambassador of the EU to ASEAN, His Excellency Ambassador Noel Sevenion, Permanent Representative for the Philippines to ASEAN and ASEAN Coordinator for EU. Students of all ASEAN member states, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. I'm pleased to welcome you to the fourth ASEAN EU Cooperation and Scholarship Day which is again being organized virtually due to the pandemic. I consider this event to be timely as it is taking place not long after the commemoration of the 54th anniversary of ASEAN. Our ceremony today also coincides with the observance of the International Youth Year, which raises awareness of the importance of youth participation and innovative solution in addressing the global challenges that we face. I would like to take this opportunity to convey my appreciation to the EU for the unwavering support to ASEAN efforts in, re in realizing an inclusive, resilient, sustainable and dynamic community. As ASEAN major trading partners, and providers of foreign direct investment in the region. The EU contributions and engagement with ASEAN is very much of value. On that note, I welcome the elevation 
of the ASEAN-EU Dialogue Partnerships to a strategic partnership at the 23rd ASEAN-EU Ministerial Meeting in December last year. As a strategic partners, ASEAN and the EU share strong and multifaceted relations of shared value and determination in ensuring continued development in our region, particularly as we emerge from the global pandemic and build back better. As we enter the 44th years of the ASEAN EU dialogue relations this year, I'm pleased to note that our cooperation continues to advance across all pillars, including in fostering a knowledge based society and enriching the region's competitiveness to higher education. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has disrupted and upended life especially the most vulnerable and marginalized. This has jeopardized our progress in improving regional higher education. University closure and widespread travel restrictions have gravely affected not only students' access and mobility, but also their future employment and role in the community building. Recognizing that education remains key to the region's post-pandemic recovery, ASEAN has been working hard to ensure the continuous delivery of quality education in the new normal. The roles of higher education in developing adaptable and future-ready human resources has become crucial. In this context, the extension of the ASEAN EU support to the higher education in ASEAN region or EU share program serve as an important part of our collective efforts in realizing a regional higher education space which is characterized with an increased level of internationalization, harmonization, innovation and partnership. A central feature of this program is a provision of the share scholarships, which is offered to ASEAN students studying at selected ASEAN universities. By promoting intra-ASEAN and ASEAN EU students' mobility, the scholarship give our youth the opportunity to expand their horizon and learn new perspective. On that note, I'm pleased that a total of 590 scholarships has been awarded thus far. In further advancing our cooperation in strengthening higher education, the EU share program convened its 12th policy dialogue last month, which allow experts and stakeholders to exchange idea and experiencing on building an inclusive, resilient, sustainable and dynamic ASEAN higher education space. One of the highlights of this policy dialogue was the launch of the ASEAN Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025, which aims to develop strategies in realizing the regional higher education space with the advisory support of the EU share programs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, despite having to convene by virtually again this year, I'm hopeful that our with the help of the technology, the ASEAN EU Cooperation and Scholarships Day events will be able to reach and benefit a wider audience. I encourage the students who are joining us today to explore and take up a valuable opportunity to further your studies. Allow me to close by thanking the EU again for making this collaboration possible. My appreciation also goes to the member states of both ASEAN and the EU for your active participation in showcasing the school the scholarships program. That I uh, thank you very much for your attention and look forward to these events next year. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency. Again, congratulations for the 44th year of partnership. And as His Excellency said, we hope that all the youth that has joined us here today will be able to tackle the global challenges that is happening through the interaction that happens in the next two days. And now I would like to give the floor to His Excellency Igor Drismans, EU Ambassador to ASEAN. Please. 
Thank you, uh, Christopher. Uh, Your Excellency ASEAN Secretary General uh, Lim Jok Hoi, Your Excellency Permanent Representative of the Philippines and my new country coordinator, uh, Ambassador Noel Servigon, dear students and other guests. It's uh, a real pleasure to be here with you uh, today to welcome all of you to our fourth ASEAN EU Cooperation and uh, Scholarship Day and to see such great interest with over 4,000 people who have registered for this event today. As the Secretary General mentioned, last Saturday marked the 54th anniversary of the founding of ASEAN. So allow me to wish all of our ASEAN friends a belated happy birthday. The deep commitment of ASEAN members to work together to solve problems and develop opportunities in Southeast Asia is a testament to the value of cooperation. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, ASEAN countries will this decade continue to grow in prosperity, innovation, and significance on the world stage. For us Europeans, ASEAN uh, at the center of uh, the regional architecture is a force for good in the world. ASEAN can help resolve disputes peacefully, foster development in a cooperative way, promote new ideas and inventions through invaluable people-to-people contacts. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the launch of the EU strategy for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific this April underlines the EU's commitment to tightening our relationship and to achieve a sustainable, prosperous future for the citizens of ASEAN and EU. I'm personally excited to play my part in this process in my role as uh, ambassador and Let me say on this note that this past Saturday also marked the sixth birthday of the EU diplomatic representation in ASEAN. And EU-ASEAN relations have steadily expanded and strengthened over that time. The EU has accumulated seven decades of experience in facilitating peace and growth in Europe. Today, we are committed to supporting our friends and partners in ASEAN as uh, they seek out and implement ways of deepening cooperation and connectivity in the region in the service to the people of Southeast Asia. Less than two months ago, we finalized the first block-to-block air transport agreement in the world. The agreement will help rebuild air connectivity between ASEAN and Europe, which has been decimated by the COVID-19 pandemic and open up new growth opportunities for greater business, trade, tourism, and people-to-people links between both our regions. Connecting our people is at the heart of the partnership. It's through common understanding and shared experiences that we build a platform for cooperation that is deep, sustainable, and that can be truly transformative. For this reason, I'm delighted that this fourth ASEAN EU Cooperation and Scholarship Day promotes concrete educational opportunities that give rise to human experiences which which tighten our bonds and change lives. I think we all agree that getting talented students and researchers to move and work between our two regions is of great benefit for those who are moving and gaining these experiences abroad. But the benefits from their mobility also spills over to our citizens at large because these new contexts spark novel ideas, pushing research and learning into exciting directions. The EU has been a long supporter of internal student mobility through our own Erasmus program. And today we do the same with ASEAN. This is why we're working on the continuation and expansion of our higher education programs. Focusing specifically on intra-ASEAN mobility, the EU support to higher education in the ASEAN region or EU share provides scholarships for higher education and works with ASEAN member states to make it easier to study in another ASEAN country. From 2016 onwards, SHARE has provided over 500 one-semester intra-ASEAN scholarships for ASEAN university students. And the new phase will support 300 more students before the end of 2022. Our hope is that with combined efforts, we will see the establishment of an ASEAN scholarship We envision a program similar to the model provided by Erasmus in Europe, in which every year thousands of students and researchers are supported to experience work and life at the university in another EU country. We promote not just exchanges within ASEAN, but also between ASEAN and the EU uh, 
uh, universities through the Erasmus Plus program. Since 2014, the EU has awarded over 5,500 scholarships to ASEAN students and university staff, while more than 3,000 3, European students and staff have taken up study or work in ASEAN countries during that same period. And today, despite the challenges of the pandemic, the EU is continuing its support to mobility in higher education. This year alone, 213 students from ASEAN countries received Erasmus Mundus scholarships, a record high. In closing, let me just say how wonderful it is to see the interest from young people in ASEAN remain very high. I'm also very happy that through going virtual for this event in the past two years, we have been able to spread the word on EU and ASEAN study and research opportunities to an even wider audience. For this occasion, we have gone above and beyond our usual virtual events, so please enjoy the plethora of workshops, expositions, talk shows, quizzes and games. I would like to thank you all for joining us uh, today and tomorrow and offer my special thanks to the exhibitors from the EU and ASEAN for your support in the preparation and presence in the webinars and booths. And it's my hope that our participants, ASEAN youth and students can take full advantage of the next two days to explore the different scholarship opportunities and to draw inspiration from their fellow ASEAN youth leaders. At this event, we will do what the EU's partnership with ASEAN is all about, bringing together people and ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you, His Excellency. And I would like to express a special mention to the work, the combined effort that is happening. Congratulations for everyone. And we hope that today, the 4,000 participants here today, we can play our effort here to connect through this event in all of the platform that has been available, made available for everyone here. And next, we also have Ambassador Nola Servigon, permanent representative of the Philippines to ASEAN. Mr. Ambassador, would you please share a word or two with us? Uh, Your Excellency, Secretary General Datu Lim Jokhoi, your Excellency, the Ambassador of the European Union to ASEAN, Igor Rismans, my new counterpart here in Jakarta. Partner organizations, virtual exhibitors, young citizens of ASEAN and of the European Union, good afternoon. Today is a celebration of the people-to-people -people connectivity of our two regions. ASEAN and the European Union, and an opportunity for ASEAN students to explore higher education options and scholarships. The Philippines is the, as the country coordinator for ASEAN-EU dialogue relations, is honored to take part in this day's program. Cooperation in education is more important than ever due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on young people around the world. UNESCO estimates that schools were either fully or partially closed for more than 30 weeks between March 2020 and May 2021 in half of the countries of the world. As of late June, 19 countries still have full school closures affecting nearly 157 million learners. Meanwhile, 768 million more learners were affected by the partial school closures. In our ASEAN region, the pandemic prompted the widespread closure of schools, universities, and training institutions, affecting more than 150 million students and learners, and posing a serious threat to learning continuity and skills development. At the same time, the pandemic has highlighted the rate in which technology and virtual learning and other alternative learning have been embraced. ASEAN urgently needs a more systematic integration of digital and 21st century skills and competencies into the higher education curricula. ASEAN's ministers of education have therefore agreed to work towards the digital transformation of education systems in a region by fostering digital literacy to ensure that education in a region is equitable, 
inclusive and fit for the future. <clears throat> In this regard, we warmly welcome the continued cooperation between ASEAN and the EU on higher education amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We appreciate the fact that EU's flagship programs, the EU support to higher education in the ASEAN region, or EU share, and Erasmus have pushed through amidst the pandemic. The two programs have offered a valuable opportunity for ASEAN students to study in other ASEAN member states and in the EU, and also for EU students to study in the ASEAN region, resulting in lifelong friendships and bonds between and among the peoples of our two blocks. It also allows talented ASEAN students to receive valuable training and reach their full potential to the benefit of the region and the world. In particular, the EU SHARE program, which allows ASEAN University students to study in another ASEAN University, has provided over 500 one-semester scholarships to ASEAN students from a network of 32 universities across the region. We note that since 2014, the EU has awarded over 5,500 scholarships to ASEAN students to study in Europe through programs such as Erasmus. On the other hand, more than 3,000 EU students have studied or worked in ASEAN member states during the same period. For these and other programs focused on people-to-people -people connectivity, we would like to express our deepest appreciation and thanks to the European Union for its commitment to strengthen and support higher education in ASEAN. And to our dear students, the young people of ASEAN, we are glad that you have joined us. And we encourage you to make the most out of the next two days. Be proactive, ask questions, and use this opportunity to expand your networks and learn more about the opportunities available to you. As a former teacher, I wish the young citizens of ASEAN success in exploring in the next two days the opportunities for future education in the European Union. I am looking forward to seeing the young leaders of ASEAN in this cyber activity of ours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. As Mr. Ambassador said, let's hope that we can make the most of the next two days, expand our networks, and get credible information in order to expand our future. So I'm sure everyone here is very, very excited to start exploring the venue. But just before we do that, I would like to invite all the speakers back for a quick photo session for the opening ceremony. Thank you, sir. So I will count to three and we will take the photo on three. So please give us your best ASEAN EU smile. One, two, three. And one more time. One, two, three. Thank you so much. And now before everyone goes to the platform, there is a quick video tour that we will show straight after this to give you an idea of what it is all about and how to best start exploring. Here you go. Welcome to the fourth ASEAN EU Cooperation and Scholarship Day. You are now in the reception area. Here is the list of events we have prepared for you. Click on the schedule button to get a reminder on your phone or devices. Just dropping in to see what's on? Find this little red button to see which event is currently live and just join the fun. Take the time to explore the expo area and see what has been prepared for you. Here on the booth panel, you can have a one-on-one -on -one Q and A session with our exhibitors. Download all the information that interests you. Join workshops and sessions, or try out the games. Each session also has its own booth panel for you to interact with the speakers. To have a conversation with an expert representative, click share video and audio. The booth moderator will allow you to have a conversation with them. 
Have something to say? Head on over to the Voice of Youth booth. Pick your virtual background and overlay and say it with a photo or video. Don't forget to follow and tag at EU in ASEAN when you post it on social media. You might be the lucky winner to get a special hamper from the EU. We're so excited to have you here and we wish you a good time. There you go. And this video will be available again on the reception area. So if you want to access it again, or you want to share this with someone that you know um, that's not on this opening ceremony, please share this video. Let them know it is on the reception area. And right now we are on the main stage. So for those of you who lost fashion or are interested in the concept of circular economy and sustainable fashion, make sure to stick around because we have a really exciting session here on the main, main stage at 1 p.m with EU expert on circul circular economy, Magnus Bankston, a social activist artist from Thailand, who is also known for her beautiful work, is also there. Vishnu Lada, that is an expert in turning trash to art, and also Kaya De La Rosa, Kaya De La Rosa from Indonesia, who will share her journey on sustainable fashion. So please stick around for that. Now, go around, explore, explore the area, and make sure that you follow our social media accounts at EU in ASEAN. Make sure you check the reception area, book them all of the events in your calendars, and also go visit the Voice of Youth booth so that you can take a photo of yourself, upload it on social media, and tag at EU in ASEAN and use the hashtag ASEAN EU Day 2021. That is hashtag ASEAN EU Day 2021. Thank you and enjoy the next two days.